Uh, hello viewers, uh, today's topic is uh, uh, hypnopompic sleep paralysis or simply known as uh, sleep paralysis, you know. Uh, but before starting the topic, I would like to request you to subscribe this channel for more informative videos every day. Now, have you ever felt like uh, you are awake but you are unable to move and uh, you might have uh, even felt afraid uh, but could not call for help you know? This condition is called sleep paralysis and uh, it may leave you feeling frightened and especially if you have uh, also see or hear things that uh, are not really there you know and it may happen only once or you may have it frequently um, and sometimes several times in a night you know now the good news is that the sleep paralysis is not uh, considered a dangerous uh, health issue you know and uh, the sleep researchers conclude that uh, in most cases, the sleep paralysis is simply a sign that your body is not moving smoothly and through the stages of the sleep, you know. And uh, it's very rare that the sleep paralysis is linked to deep underlying psychiatric problems. Now, over the centuries, uh, the symptoms of the sleep paralysis have been described in many ways and uh, they are often attributed to an uh, evil presence or unseen night uh, uh, demons, you know, in the ancient times and the old hag in the uh, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and the uh, Island Adoptions, you know. And uh, almost uh, every culture throughout the history uh, has had the stories of the uh, shadowy evil creatures that terrify the helpless humans at night, you know. And the people have long uh, sought explanations for this uh, mystery sleep time paralysis and uh, is accompanying the feeling of terror, you know. But we need to know what is exactly the sleep paralysis is. Now, the sleep paralysis is a feeling of being conscious but unable to move. And uh, it occurs when a person passes between the stages of the wakefulness and the sleep. And uh, during these uh, transitions, uh, you may be unable to move or speak for a few seconds up to few minutes and uh, some people may also feel like uh, pressure or the sense of choking you know and uh, sleep paralysis may accompany other sleep disorders such as uh, narcolepsy you know. Now narcolepsy is an uh, overpowering need to sleep caused by a problem with the brain's ability to regulate the sleep. Uh, now the next most important question is which is being asked is uh, when does this happen? Well, sleep paralysis usually occurs at uh, uh, one after two times. Uh, if it occurs while you are falling asleep, it's called uh, uh, hypnagogic or uh, uh, pre-dormital uh, pre sleep paralysis, you know. And if it happens as you are waking up, it's called uh, uh, hypnopompic or post-dormital sleep paralysis, you know. So these are the two uh, uh, times when it happens. Now, as you uh, fall asleep, your body slowly relaxes and uh, usually you become less aware and uh, you do not need, uh, even you don't notice the change, you know. And if you remain or become aware while feeling asleep, you may notice that you cannot move or you cannot speak. You know. And now, in the the next thing was a hypnopompic sleep paralysis. So, in this condition, during sleep, your body uh, alertness between the uh, uh, REM, which is known as a rapid eye movement, and NREM, which means non-rapid eye movement, sleep. You know. Now, one cycle of the REM and the NREM sleep lasts about uh, it's about 90 minutes, you know. Now, the 
N or EM, uh, sleep occurs first and takes up to 75% of your overall sleep time. And uh, during the N or EM sleep, your body relaxes and uh, restores itself, you know. And at the end of the N or EM, your sleep shifts to REM, you know, which is a rapid eye movement. You know? So your eyes move quickly and uh, dreams occur, you know. And But the rest of your body remains uh, very relaxed and your muscles are turned off during the REM sleep, you know. Now, if you become aware before the REM cycle has finished, you may notice that you cannot move or you cannot speak. Now, the next thing is, who is at risk of getting these uh, sleep paralysis? Well, uh, up to as many as uh, 4 out of uh, every 10 people may have the sleep paralysis. And uh, this common condition is often first noticed in the teen years. And, uh, but men and women of any age can have it. And uh, it may run in the families, you know. And other factors that uh, may be linked to the sleep paralysis include like uh, lack of sleep, you know, or uh, a sleep schedule that changes, you know, or the mental conditions such as stress and uh, bipolar disorders, you know, and uh, uh, like other uh, sleeping on the back, you know, and other sleep problems such as uh, narcolepsy or the nighttime uh, leg cramps, you know. And use of certain medications and uh, substance abuse, you know, like uh, use of link drugs, you know. And uh, but these were the uh, introduction, you know. And uh, the next thing is how to diagnose uh, that someone is having the uh, sleep paralysis, you know. Now, uh, if you find yourself uh, unable to move or speak for a few seconds or the minutes when falling asleep or when waking from the sleep, you know, when waking up, you know, then it's likely you have the uh, isolated recurrent sleep paralysis. And uh, there is no need to treat this condition. Uh, uh, but if you have the concerns, you know, you should speak to your doctor. Uh, like uh, if you feel anxious about your symptoms you know uh, or your symptoms uh, leave you very tired during the day or uh, the symptoms keep you up during the night you know in the next your doctor may want uh, to gather the more information about your sleep health uh, by doing any any other things like uh, mostly uh, ask you to describe your symptoms and uh, keep a sleep diary for the few weeks you know or uh, he will discuss uh, with your uh, health history, you know, or including any known sleep disorders in the family history or any sleep disorders, you know, or uh, and if he suspects something, you know, he may refer you to a sleep specialist uh, for further, further evaluation, you know, and uh, uh, he may order to conduct the uh, overnight sleep studies or the daytime nap studies to make sure that uh, you do not have any other uh, sleep disorder now the next thing is uh, once diagnosed uh, that uh, you have the sleep disorders then how to treat this condition uh, well most people need to uh, they don't need any treatment uh, for the sleep paralysis and uh, the treatment may under uh, it may be like uh, Treating the underlying conditions such as uh, narcolepsy may help if you are anxious or unable to sleep well, you know. And the uh, treatment options uh, may include like uh, improving the sleep habits, you know, or using the antidepressants or treating any underlying mental health condition, you know, or um, treating any other sleep disorders such as narcolepsy and uh, leg cramps as well, you know. Uh, But there are some other things that uh, the lifestyle changes, you know, that may be helpful. And uh, uh, there's no need to fear the nighttime uh, uh, demons or the uh, alien uh, abductors, you know. And if you have the occasional sleep paralysis, you can take steps at home to control this disorder and start by making sure that you get enough sleep, you know, and uh, do what you can to relieve the stress in your life, you know, especially 
just before bedtime you know and try new sleeping positions uh, if you are sleeping on the back you know so this way uh, these are the uh, few steps that are helpful uh, to prevent the sleep paralysis uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about the sleep paralysis narcolepsy uh, or any other medical condition you can visit our website www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more informative videos every day keep watching thank you and goodbye